We've heard it a million times before. EVs are too expensive. They don't offer enough range and they're just not practical enough. Well, naysayers, how about this? This is the new MG ZS EV. It's a sub 30,000 pound, 270 odd mile electric SUV with a seven year warranty and a kit list that is longer than my right arm. But is it any good? Before we find out, subscribe, like this video and hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos go live. The MG ZS EV isn't completely new. This is a facelifted version of the increasingly popular family car, which means some styling changes, some spec tweaks, and a couple of new batteries, the biggest of which, as mentioned, will do nearly 300 miles on a charge. Every model comes in under the current cap for UK government's plug-in car grant, and at the time of filming, it was possible to have one of these big battery MGs on your drive for £319 per month, with a reasonable 10-ish percent deposit. EVs? Expensive, not this one. Okay, so 300 quid a month is still a big chunk of cash, but we'd wager that a lot of you guys who are considering an MG ZS, probably spending that kind of money on a diesel Nissan Qashqai. And just think, you could feasibly fill this car's battery for less than 15 quid, and that's before you've taken into account whole life costs, things like company car tax and stuff like that. So it's pretty decent value for money. Anyway, back to the changes. You get this new flush front end. It's been completely smoothed off and the grille has disappeared. You still get this front mounted charge port. It's moved from the badge to here on the side. Not sure why, still super convenient to use. Elsewhere, LED lights, new bumpers, these 17 inch wheels, they're new as well. And so is this Battersea blue color. Shh, I know you get it on the petrol car, but it's new for the EV. But it's in here where the MG ZS really feels like a new car, even before you pull away. You get this new 10.1 inch screen that's running completely new software compared to the older MG5. It is packed with features. You get navigation, you get 360 degree cameras, you get Apple CarPlay and you get Android Auto. But most importantly, it's pretty slick to use. It's really well integrated, it's responsive and the menus are pretty intuitive as well. And then you've got these digital dials behind the steering wheel. I don't say this lightly, if you dump these in an Audi or a Mercedes, most people wouldn't know the difference. It's just a really classy piece of design, again, with loads of intuitive menus should you choose to use them. But it can't all be sunshine and rainbows. And while quality on the whole is very good in here, there are some cheap plastics on the doors up here. Now elsewhere, you do get this lovely leather style material on the steering wheel, but frustratingly, it only adjusts up and down, not out towards you, which means it's really difficult sometimes to get a comfortable driving position. Furthermore, these seat bases are really flat, so there's not much in the way of thigh support. MG has tried to keep things simple by offering just two batteries and two specs, plus a single add-on package for flagship cars. The range kicks off with the SE, which brings most of the kit you'll want or need, including automatic LED lights, alloy wheels, climate control, keyless entry and those two screens. Trophy sits above the SE for around two and a half grand more and brings a panoramic roof, heated leather effect seats and a better stereo. Both specs will eventually be available with both batteries, with a smaller range 51 kilowatt hour model going on sale in 2022. That model offers a claimed range of 198 miles, though we've not had a chance to try one. The one we have tried is the 72 kilowatt hour long range model in top spec Trophy Connect, guys. We've talked a little bit about the kit list, but let's now talk about the driving experience. And if I had to use one word to describe what this car is like to drive, what would it be? Fun? No, not exactly. Quick? Not quite. Comfortable? Yeah, sure, it's, it's pretty comfortable. Quiet? Yeah. It's pretty quiet for a car of this price, but if there was one single word that I would use to sum up this car and the way it drives, it would probably be unremarkable. And I don't mean that in a negative way. There are plenty of new car buyers, the majority, in fact, that just want to get from A to B as reliably and efficiently as possible. And the MG does that, no dramas. Another area where the MG is a little shy of being truly competitive is when it comes to charging. Sure, if you're only going to top up at home using a 7 kilowatt wall box, then it can mix it with the big boys. But if most of your top ups are from public rapid chargers, then the MG's 76 kilowatt maximum can't match the likes of the Peugeot E2008 or, say, a Volkswagen ID3. Still, if you're feeling patient and hook up the ZS to an appropriate charger, you can juice the batteries from 10 to 80% in 42 minutes, providing a real world range, give or take, of around 200 miles. 
fill it to full and we reckon you're looking at about 220 to 230 miles on a charge. We've been seeing about three and a half miles per kilowatt hour without any effort at all. The electric motor is smooth and as I said, it is plenty peaceful enough in here. With only 150 horsepower, it's not exactly fast, but it's quick enough to keep up with traffic. There are three drive modes and another three modes for the regenerative braking, which means in the strongest setting, you can do most of your driving on one pedal. This is not a car that will amaze or excite, and that is mainly due to this car's driving position. That complete lack of steering wheel adjustment and the fact that the seat bases are so flat means you're never truly comfortable. The steering is light and there is pretty much no feel to be had through the wheel. There isn't all that much grip either, although admittedly some of that might be down to the fact that this car has done less than 500 miles and the tyres still need scrubbing in. But yeah, if there was one word to describe the MG's driving experience, it's unremarkable. The same can't be said for boot space. The 470 litre boot is a really good size and there's storage under the floor for the charge cables. Folding the seats down is nice and easy, but with the floor in its lowest position, there is a bit of a lip, and total load volume of 1100 litres isn't exactly class leading. Space in the back is generous enough, though taller adults sitting in the outer seats might find their head brushing on the ceiling, especially on top spec models fitted with the panoramic roof. Legroom is good though, and the flat floor means those sitting in the middle shouldn't have too much trouble getting comfortable. For so many people, the biggest barrier to entry when it comes to electric cars is price. The MG ZS EV isn't perfect, but it's incredible value for money. It's simple, it's honest, and if your next electric car doesn't need to have a premium badge or the very sharpest driving dynamics, then this, this should definitely be on your shortlist. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews, and check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Finally, while you're here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to ensure you never miss a video.